Well, uh, I think you've hit it, Melissa. You know, last month we saw consumer confidence bounce up, and we were we were hopeful that, we, that this was a sign that we were going to uh, to resume the the upward trend. But unfortunately, we've now trended down. And the reason is because of inflation. And people are telling us now that things are getting very expensive. When you break it down by demographics, it's the 55 plus demographic that scored the lowest or, or had the lowest levels of consumer confidence, as well as the lower income folks. And then when you start looking at purchase intent by category, what has come way down are purchases of automobiles and the intent to buy houses. So these are the things that have been really pushing uh, sales and the economy over the past few months, and this came down. Now, I have to point out that this survey was cut off before Omicron was even uh, <laughs> known as a, as a possibility here. I suspect, Melissa, that if we did the Consumer Confidence Index today, you would see even lower numbers because not only do you have inflation as the worry, but you would then have the potential result in Omicron. And that's what, what you know I think is affecting these big retail stocks today that uh, are mostly land or you know bricks and mortar based. Right, right. Um, and and I would imagine too that you know when businesses take a look at this data, Steve, they they take a look at the state of the consumer and think at what point uh, do the confidence numbers actually spill over into spending patterns at their businesses. And the old argument used to be, well, wages are good, household debt is down at very at historic levels, down to low levels, I should say. And so the consumer is stronger than ever, so we shouldn't be worried about inflation. At, at this point, what, what is the real takeaway of this situation? Well, I, you know, I, if you have a lot of money, I mean, the higher income classes are fine, it's the, it, but the majority of the spending comes from the center and that's getting hit right now. So I think inflation is a big worry, and it looks like it's going to be not transient, but uh, it's going to be stickier, uh, as, as the Fed chair said. So if that happens, you know, we're, we're projecting a, an inflation rate of close to 4 percent, high 3 percent for 2021. In 2022, we had hoped that that would come down closer to 3 percent. But if it's stickier, it means that these prices will continue to take more and more of the uh, uh, of the income, and so therefore all the discretionary spending goes away. I don't think it's going to be a Im big impact here for the 2021 holiday season, Melissa. It looks like all that inventory is in. It looks like you know you have opportunities here to buy online, and that's kind of what we've been seeing over the month of November. Even though uh, you know Cyber Monday and Black Friday was a little weaker than than was expected, it was down versus year ago. It, it happened earlier, and it's happening uh, online. So, you know, what's going to be problematic here are the uh, bricks-and-mortar retailers who don't have a great online presence. And then into next year, the question is, if this keeps going, what's going to happen to GDP? Because so much of this, uh, of the dollars, are getting uh, inflated here. How much does the, the stock market and whether or not the stock market shows declines such as we're seeing today factor into consumer confidence? I mean, we've seen record numbers of retail investors join in the markets over the past couple of years, Steve, and, and it really enjoy the market's historic rally. Um, we've also seen a lot of households get involved in crypto and build crypto fortunes. To the extent that these markets are volatile, as we've seen over the past few days, and maybe this is the first bout of real volatility that these new investors have had to deal with, how much does that weigh on confidence, you think? Well, I think it impacts it. You know, consumer confidence is more uh, driven by what's happening to me as the consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, is my job safe? You know, is my income safe? You know, is my buying power safe? But I think that spills over into the market, as does the projection on interest rates. And so, you know, if, if we felt that the inflation was ameliorating, you know, interest rates might stay lower and therefore it would continue to fuel the boom. When inflation goes up and interest rates go up, of course, it hits the market. And I think you're seeing a combination today of uh, an estimate that maybe interest rates will have to go up higher. We're projecting two to three uh, increases next year in order to combat inflation at the same time you know, you, you are going to hit growth. And so, you know, the, the nasty word of stagflation, of course, for people who remember the 70s, uh, comes into play. Now, we don't think that that's going to happen, but and then we don't hope it's going to be happening. But then you have Omicron that comes on top of this. If it's a weak thing, if it doesn't uh, fill the hospitals, if it's not really scary, if it doesn't hit entertainment and travel, we should be OK. But if it's really virulent and it does start to hit those industries, it could put us right back where we were at the beginning of 2021. So there are some real unknowns, Melissa, in the market today as a result of the confluence of these events.